by the river on London's prettiest ground, Craven Cottage. That's Fulham against Bristol City, and for Fulham it's been a bad few weeks when a promising start to the season has foundered. But their team today sees the return of Steve Earle after a touch of flu, with Malcolm Webster continuing in goal for the injured Peter Miller. As for Bristol City, they field the side that drew with Coventry in midweek in a League Cup tie. They also have a deputy goalkeeper, young Len Bond, are getting another chance in place of the injured Ray Cashley. A young side full of ambition and high in the table. Three important milestones in the Fulham side today. Les Barrett is making his 300th league appearance. Uh, we've also got Barry Lloyd, his 200th first team appearance. Uh, Malcolm Webster, the goalkeeper, his 100th appearance. And I'm not sure how many Bobby Gould has made for Bristol City, but he's their leading scorer with nine. The crowd, though, now waits for the start, and the referee is Dee Richardson of Blackburn. So Fulham then kick off, attacking the goal to our left in the white shirts and black shorts. Bristol City in red with white shorts. Fulham, having lost their last four league games, now find themselves after a promising start to the season in 15th place. Bristol City themselves very handily placed fourth in the table. Trevor Taint in their number seven, but the ball, in fact, going off. Uh, Les Barrett and tainted with the throw for Bristol City. Here's Fear. Went penalised there for the uh, tackle on the number 11, Keith Fear. So a free kick to Bristol City. Lacey. Gow. And Drysdale failing to keep it in, so it's another throw for Fulham. Fear missing the header. Went was behind him. Conway, back for Cutbush, who's seen a lot of the action so far, but that wasn't a very good piece of it for him. Back for Drysdale again, and now Gao, very industrious in the middle of the field. Oh, Sweeney half came for that and then stopped. And really from that moment of hesitation, Wall has lost the ball, and now here's Earl, faced by Rogers. Busby is in the middle, and Earl has got Rogers going always. Still with Earl, and he hit it over, and he hit it by the linesman on this side was flagging. For well, offside, I would have thought, against Busby. But some uh, good play there by Steve Earl. He really had Rogers going both ways. And the linesman flagged as uh, Earl was shooting. Cutbush with Fulham's throw. Good piece of running there by Conway to make himself available. Cutbush now. Mallory to Slough. Being pushed back by the sheer work rate of these Bristol City players, hustling and harrying all the while. Really is no easy ride for any Fulham player in possession this afternoon, but here's Earl. Cross deep again towards Barry Lloyd, he came in so well, Busby was right in there too, and finally it was Sweeney who got it away. That's a couple of occasions that Steve Earle looks to be the man who might find a way through this Bristol defence. But here's Lloyd. Barrett. Lloyd again to Mullery. Really busying to their job now, Fulham. Rogers header away. Mullery. But now there's Richie. Lacey caught a little bit in two minds as Gould goes off. And now Bobby Gould is away. Oh, good play there by Paul Wendt as Gould tried to turn it across. Gould fighting on though. And that time it was Lacey who got it away. The shot on the turn. And it almost got there from Keith Fear. Well, he had to take his chance quickly, did Fear after Gould had made such a tremendous run there, having tricked Mullery. Spent the whole of yesterday in bed with tonsillitis and was doubtful right until lunchtime. Well, a couple of Fulham defenders getting in each other's way, and it's finally Paul Wendt who gets it only as far as Drysdale. Chet trapped that very well on his chest and found the number eight. The game, in fact, should have been stopped way back because the ball had gone momentarily out of play. But it's with Drysdale again now for Bristol City. Gao inside for Fear. 
Slip past one, slip past another. The cross is stopped by Lacey. Gao again. Cut push. Couldn't really make the right sort of contact, and it'll be now for Drysdale to cross it once more. Towards Emmanuel, and that was a good header by Emmanuel. It had for the moment, uh, Webster going the wrong way. As the whistle goes for half time, fairly undistinguished first half that uh, remains goalless. But I should think there's a lot of talking that will be going on in the dressing room at half time from manager Alex Stock of Fulham and Alan Dix of Bristol City. Uh, still, so much more to come on the big match this afternoon with Brian Clough and Malcolm Allison. And the half time score here at Craven Cottage reads Fulham nil, Bristol City nil, and we'll bring you the second half in a couple of minutes. So the lights at Craven Cottage on for the first time on a Saturday this season. A sign that winter really is drawing in now, and it'll be Bristol City's turn to kick off. They now will be attacking the goal to our left. Still nil-nil. And Emmanuel now for Bristol City. City, in fact, who scored only one goal on the, this ground in their last five visits. They really haven't uh, shown too many uh, opportunities, or haven't had too many opportunities to increase on that rather dismal record, but at the same time, Fulham also, against a very stern Bristol City defence, have not too had uh, too many opportunities in their own right. There's Mullery, put under a little bit of pressure there, but not conceding the corner, it's with Steve Earle. The long ball there to Busby, turned in this time for Lloyd. I think one of the most impressive things about Bristol City is the way that they have hustled Fulham from beginning to end. If they don't run out of steam, they've got every chance of at least taking a point. There's Fear. So Malcolm Webster with the clearance for Fulham. Earl's header. And Drysdale's. Paul Went. Went past Gao. And the referee thought that was serious enough to uh, pull it up and have a word with Gao for a rather late challenge there on Paul Went. Barrett. Lloyd. Through the legs of... Uh, Tainton, but it didn't get through to Barrett again. Earl making a good run towards the touchline to try and get away from the Bristol defence. Lloyd now. Earl. Cross there, and Fear he comes, yes! Oh, it's put there, and it goes to Conway, the man who finally touched it home, and the desolate figure there of Len Bond, because it was his mistake as the cross came over, he got a hold of it and dropped it, and Conway had the simplest of tasks. Goalkeeper's error, Fulham's goal. 1-0. So, Conway, the man who scored it, and Len Bond, the man who really conceded it, the man who was in bed with tonsillitis yesterday, and they're going across to the linesman, and whether they persuaded the referee now to go across to the linesman as well, and so we must wait to see whether this is a valid goal or not. Now, a long, long discussion and a dramatic moment that decides whether it's a goal or not. And the goal will stand. So Bristol City are behind. Poor old Len Bond, he must be feeling desolate now. Still only 19 years old, remember, and Alan Dix, the, girl, the manager, was telling me that he spent the whole of yesterday in bed with tonsillitis. And with Cashley, the first-team goalkeeper, the regular first-team goalkeeper, also out injured. There really was a bit of bother there for Bristol. But now they've got to spring a few men forward. Here's Merrick coming forward. There's a good ball from Cutbush now to Busby. This could be very dangerous now. Earl is in the middle, and Busby is taken far, far too long. Earl in the middle, who'd run to a good position, is furious with the young number nine, and Busby won't be very pleased with himself either. And another one. Sweeney. That's as far forward almost as uh, Jerry Sweeney's gone all afternoon. Well, the players, the Fulham players, are unhappy with the referee with that decision. Giving the corner to Bristol City, they felt that it uh, should have been a goal kick. We were much too far, really, to say who was right. Who... 
referee is the man who counts. Richie nodding it back in again. That could be very dangerous. And a good dive there by Malcolm Webster as Gould went in on him. Ducking very neatly to one side. Drysdale, the game really livened up now. Sweeney to Tainter. Bristol really have got a lot of men forward now. Taking on his fullback so well, Trevor Tainton here. And still taking him on. Looking just for that yard that'll give him the cross. And finally has to uh, concede for the corner. The corner conceded by Slough. Keith Fear will go across and take it to number 11. David Rogers again right up. He and Richie will be the two big men that he'll aim for. And Merrick's in there too. It'll come for Gow. Played gently there to Richie. Crossed in again there. That needs a fist away by Webster, and that's just what it got. And now it's Conway. And now played for Earl. Now this could be very interesting as well as Gow tries to come back. Still with Steve Earl. Still with Earl. Having his shirt tucked and still with Earl. Crossed beautifully. And a goal. Oh, and a magnificent goal for Fulham. Scored by Busby. And made in the most magnificent fashion by Steve Earl. What a tremendous goal. No wonder they're hugging Steve Earl. He ran more than half the length of the field, jinking past one challenge after the other. Wasn't selfish enough to shoot himself. Crossed it for Busby, and that makes it two. Well, Lacey was struggling to get that one. Gould is trying to get in as well. Paul Wendt is shadowing him. So the Fulham bench a little happier now, and they haven't had too much to cheer in the last few weeks. And the substitute waiting to come on there for Bristol City is Don Gillies. John Sillett, the man in the middle, used to be with Chelsea. But it's Fulham at the moment. The ball too high for Conway. And now Bristol City able to bring their substitute on. I wonder if it's Emmanuel who was injured just after half-time who's going off. Gill is coming on after the inspection of the boots. And indeed, it is Emmanuel who's going off. John Emmanuel, the Welsh international. He seemed to injure his shoulder just after half-time. So Gillies is on. Straight to Conway. And now it's a bloody little flick again by Conway to Busby. Into Mullery, hit first time, and by heavens he blasted that. Bond with the goal kick. It is fear. Played for Tainton. This looks uh, a bit promising for Bristol City. Still with Tainton. And now with Gillies. Played back there for the number two Sweeney, who couldn't have been more than a foot wide. Was offside without question when that uh, ball was hit forward. Tainton again to Sweeney. Cross to his number three, Drysdale. Gow played nicely there for Drysdale once more. This could be dangerous for Fulham. There's the shot by Gould. <laughs> Webster getting down very well indeed. Fear forcing him to kick with the left foot now. Gow desperately trying to cover. And Busby, caught for the moment, got the legs of the Bristol City player. Finds Conway instead. Mullery. Cutbush and Busby. Mullery. The momentum has really slowed now, and Bristol have had so much opportunity to get all their men back. But even then, even so, Cutbush has gone way through on the right-hand side. 
Cut push again, this time back for Mullery. Crossed in once more to Earl. Stamped nicely back to Conway! And hit beautifully by Conway. So well, in fact, that Bond could only uh, parry it. Fulham throw. And now here's Richie. Ahead of him is Gow. This could be a chance now for Bristol City. Or rather, it's uh, Gillies the substitute. Across, and it's there by Trevor Tainton. Over the head to the ball. And Bristol City have got right back into the game. So Tainton, number seven. Has scored to make it. Yes, and he wants to get on with it quickly. Does Len Bond. So can Bristol City now find one point where certainly one didn't seem to exist a couple of minutes ago. Wentz had a good and powerful. A hefty kick, though, by the other number five, Rogers. Uh, this game still very much in the balance. Gao, and here's Fear in a very promising position now. This could be the equaliser, and it's saved by Webster. Beautifully indeed. Although you must say, I think, that uh, Keith Fear, having got in that position, would be just a little annoyed with himself for not making more of it. This really is on a knife edge now, a very good second division match indeed, as Tainton takes it up for Bristol City. Slough was backing off him, Gao hitting one, and that deflected off a Fulham defender. Beyond the reach of the diving uh, Webster, but also over the crossbar for a corner. So Bristol City now, everybody bar their goalkeeper coming forward. On my watch, three minutes to go. Played for the number three, Drysdale. A dinking cross again. Mullery getting there to nod it away. And Merrick with the shot that went over the bar. Another corner for Bristol City. Well, it's a very good finish indeed. Fulham, some five minutes or so ago, seemed to be strolling away with it, 2-0 up, and playing well. Bristol City have scored this surprise goal. Fulham have started to falter, and Bristol City really are going for them. Boston again, nodded away, that time by Paul Waite. It'll come for fear. Trying to curl one to the far side, and up goes Merrick, and that's just over. And there goes the final whistle, and it's victory for Fulham with a very good finish. Conway the first goal for them. The second one scored by Busby, but made so beautifully by Steve Earle. And then right at the end, Trevor Tainton giving this game a marvellous twist at the end by getting one for Bristol City. But so as the players go off after a very good second half with a disappointing first half put well behind us, we come to a final scoreline at Craven Cottage that will certainly have all Fulham supporters talking for a little while. Fulham 2. Bristol City won.